Barbara Grork of WCFA 101.5 FM Cape May, the radio station of the Center for Community Arts, streaming at capemayradio.org. And today we're welcoming Janet McShane, a watercolor artist and poet educated in Philadelphia at Moore College of Art and the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, who has lived and worked in Cape May for the past 15 years. And mother of nine with 12 grandchildren. She is an art teacher as well. And her interest in history may stem from her family's descent from the Mayflower, uh, the Mayflower Pil Pilgrims. And she'll, uh, she even lives in a house uh, that is an historic landmark belonging to uh, being a former tavern that was once a stop on the, an old stagecoach route uh, on, in colonial times and later. Janet, we have enough material here for three interviews. Let's go backwards. How about the history? It must be inspirational to live in a, an historic house in a historic town of Dennisville, New Jersey. What can you tell us about that? Well, yes, it is. We fell in love with this old house. It's the Townsend, uh, William Smith Townsend House, and it was started in 1690 by the Ludlam family. Um, so it has lots and lots of histories over four, four centuries. So uh, it's certainly an inspiration for me as an artist, and I fell in love with it, and I uh, talked my uh, my family into uh, uh, another another old tavern. We used to live in an old tavern up yeah. in the city. Yes. It, you it also live in a tavern in the city where you raised your family. That That's right. We, um, we grew up with uh, renovations and uh, um, old antiques that we could find. And um, our kids have, have, uh, have grown away. So when, they, when the youngest went to college, we came down here and we found Dennisville and we found this old tavern. And I used to love coming down to Cape May to paint on, on Tuesdays, I would escape from the city. So I came across this and it was a shock to my husband that he would find another old tavern that I was interested in. So we're, we're here now, 15 years. And um, you told me about the word ordinary. What does that, uh, you're living in an, an ordinary. ordinary. Yes, an ordinary is an old tavern. And they, um, when William Penn came in 1683, um, he talked about this um, old ordinary being up um, Old York Road in Philadelphia County. And that was the first one where where I painted a painting of it, and I started discovering the, all the old history, uh, including uh, uh, friends with um, uh, Ben Franklin and Godfrey was in the area. So it was a it was a I think the first green country town in Philadelphia. It was an amazing place, and I had a love of history anyway. So I kept researching it as I was raising my kids, just a little bedtime reading and discovered <laughs> uh, it, it wasn't an ordinary house at all. It was an old post office. It was a old school. It was a meeting place. It was a 38 room mansion. So when I came down here and discovered this William Townsend house, I had a lot of the history of these old taverns. You knew what it was. So yes. I so fun. So in your spare time, uh, was, while you were raising your children, you were going to school and painting? Oh, yes. I've always painted. That was how I got through raising my, my uh, family. <laughs> that was your little yes. rest of time out. That's right. And I also te uh, uh, taught in, in a lot of their, their schools. Um, mostly half-time teaching and the for the art, yeah the kids schools so then I went back and got my teaching certificate for more so I kept going with my education and started at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts and and went through their program and graduated from there in 97 so I've had lots of uh, um, fine art sculpture and uh, being able to paint portraits, whatever, it's, it's continued right along with uh, my family. Were you always writing as well? Uh, well, yes, I always did some writing. My, my grandmom um, 
uh, really love poetry. And I started right after uh, I came down here, I really started writing a lot of poetry. I love the water. I love um, the wetlands. I got connected with the Nature Center in Cape May. And I've continued uh, painting. I call it painting plein air and, and poetry. So it is something that the painting, I started writing myself notes on the back of my paintings and they ended up becoming poems in themselves. Wow. So, uh, the word plein air, would you explain that a little bit? Well, yes. Cezanne said, go out in the woods and paint. Uh, it is going outdoors and being in the environment and seeing the atmosphere, feeling it, um, literally touching it. And uh, I, I really enjoy being out there in the, uh, in the nature and it in, it's very inspiring. So uh, there was a lot of um, artists that have been plein air painters. That means going out in plenty of air. It's nothing more than uh, being in the environment. It's from the French language, right? That's right, plein air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see, um, I'm gonna have a few, I, I hope to have a few of your paintings from your website i hope to put some of them up uh as an intro to this little interview and um, uh, uh -huh. just so people can see the kind of thing you do um but and now would you like to read a few of your poems well sure i have a lot from uh the cape may harbor i have quite a few from the uh, wetlands i park myself in a place that's um very comfortable and I very much um, like going there weekly. Mm -hmm. So um, let's say one of one of my um, I don't know if you can see, but ah. one 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 of the yeah uh, paintings here um, and on the back I can read you. This is called Cold, Cold Winter Thicket. Yeah. Snow. Can I, I'm sorry. Yes. Is that the yes. same as this cover to? Um, no, this, the cover for the, um, by the, the beautiful, book, sea. By beautiful sea. That's another painting that I, that I did. This is a collection I, of writing from the Jersey Cape oh writers. Uh, this is by the beautiful sea from, yes. and you're on page, uh, 33. <laughs> oh, is that right? Okay. My, okay. Um, often I'll go to a spot like the harbor and I'll be inspired and it's not only just the painting that I'm doing but I uh, write down thoughts and sometimes I'll go back and finish a painting because I'm able to remember the scene because of what I've written on the back of the painting. So they've become poems in themselves. So this one is called Cold and it is from the harbor um, uh, the Cape May Harbor, it's called Cold. Cold winter thicket, snow piled in dune drifts, grasses sticking out, bent reeds waving their heads, dark branches holding smaller limbs and twigs, vines intertwine, a jungle of laces, holding the gray harbor behind, browns and ochres contrast the white clumpy sudsy snow. One brown bird flies onto the patch, blending into crevices. He pokes and hops onto the snow, seeking seeds left through winter winds. He flutters back into his thicket. Another balances on golden grass ends, waving with the breezes, his sky gray belly matching the clouds. Migrating flocks texture the crisp cold harbor. First 40 degrees in three weeks, beginning the thaw to spring. That's a nice January poem. <laughs> I have another one um, that I wrote. It's called Harbor Hours. And the place where I go at the nature center is right there on the harbor. So people say, don't you get tired of going to the same place all the time? But I don't. And this okay. one, it was, was written a year ago, November. It's called Harbor Hours. 
Nature Center closed. Winter hours cut back, but brants show up, swimming toward me white dark spots. Low tide and harbor their cup, traveling together, fall, dipping their heads in, they sup. Every year they'll return spring. When they've been notified, then, after having southern fling, center is open again, you may return. Food your thing, RSVP, so we'll send invitations out. Just ring, we'll make harbor sure to bring fish and crabs, we'll even sing. <laughs> and I was thinking about that one. It might uh, take a little longer. We might uh, be sending out the inv invitation a little later this spring. I don't know, but they don't care. They come back, the birds. <laughs> um, let's see. I have another one that's called um, Same same Spot. Mm -hmm. So this one, this one was written um, October three years ago. Same spot. I'm looking at the same view. Year later, people very few. One paddle boarder, one swimmer, a sightseeing boat skimmer. Sounds are heard. There's the reason lawn mowing last of season. Mother and son come to look. The harbor, the boats, shells forsook. A gentleness now, quietness, geese fly in line, awkwardness, listening to their squawking. Who's up front? My turn, honking. <laughs> Still, two guideposts, old pilings, cement slabs, memory filings, returning, same spot, no fear, in 12 years of coming here. So <laughs> now, now it's more like 15 years of coming here. <laughs> yeah. That was nice. So, but there's other places that I go, and one of them um, is the wetlands. I love going over there. I've been doing that for about seven years. So um, there's a, a wonderful marsh there um, and benches and a place where I can actually... Um, sit a spell and I get to see birds that I um that I wouldn't otherwise right because I'm sitting there quiet and I have plenty of air they have plenty of air <laughs> so here's one that I did this is um from that same that spot at the wetlands so Are there ducks there uh, yes this one is called January a uh, break in weather, 45, browns in winter, still damp cold, eight ducks in salt pan, alive, swimming, testing waters bold, shades, tones of neutrals, gray browns, breeze brings me to decision to test my staying around, car warmth calling my vision. <laughs> Through windshield, I can see fine the textures, flow of colors, atmosphere of season, line, moving brush with my watercolors, fingers stiff, I will define movement into car sublime. <laughs> oh, I have a question. Wouldn't, yes. do, do your watercolors freeze out there in, 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 on a January well, day? They can, yes, they certainly can. And, and being, uh, I call my Subaru, my other studio, studio, my outdoor <laughs> studio. So it could be, uh, it could be plein air in my Subaru studio. Right. Maybe. I don't know. Enough if that's air. That's enough air. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. And uh, what are we? How are we doing for time? I found. Oh, great. One, We're great. Yeah. Okay. I found one painting that I did, and I just connected it with the poem that it belongs to. Sometimes. Um, now this one is called. Um, uh, first snow, and the painting is um, from the wetlands, that same area that has the picnic bench and the, um, the, the table there. It's a nice place you can sit and watch the birds. This one is called First Snow. 
I wrote it in January 6th in 17. It's called First Snow. First Snow, beginning with fourth year. Soft dusting at the wetlands, plenty are painting again here. Crows, a few ducks, a few fans venturing out in winter. The orange flags waiting for plow, another storm, a hinter of what's coming, ready now. Teen temps and inches tonight, dreary cold scenes of salt marsh, browns and grays, stark contrast, white. Snow, ice, and evergreens harsh. Crisp and yet just three more weeks till Irish spring, St. Bridget's Day. It all starts underground creeks. The newness of life, I pray. Yeah. When is St. Bridget's Day? Uh, February 1st. Okay. So we, we don't have long to wait for spring yes. if we if we have a little Irish in us. Yes. yes. <laughs> and by your name, you do. Um, yes. I've been accused of being an Irish Colleen off of a boat, but then I have to say, well, it might be of the Mayflower boat back when, <laughs> and my, my maiden name was Clark. So I certainly um, have done some research on that one too. So they... They are connected with County Clare and Declare Clark. Ah. They were clerk. So they okay. wrote everything down. Yeah. So the, the clerk, so the clerk the clerks were the clerks. Yes, they were, and they were connected to uh, some of the royal courts. But they they loved writing history down, I guess. So I've been able to do a lot of history, and I think that's in my genes, the writing and the and the painting and and all of that. So it's it's um uh, it sounds logical. It, Yes, it's very logical. <laughs> <laughs> do you have another yeah. one? Uh, let's see. What do I have here? Um, well, I want one last this, one. Okay, this one, um, this one I did from um, the the back bay. It was more like um, North Wildwood, mm -hmm. and sometimes I'll sit. I think I was. Uh, probably sitting in a car for this one, but it was done tw in 2020. I'm collecting a lot of my pandemic poems from this year. Um, so you can be by yourself in your Subaru, right? That's right. You're socially yes. distanced. That's right. I'm socially distanced, but not from nature. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> golden, uh, golden tan, grassy sounds day. A line of gray ducks go by. Pains gray reflecting back bay, misty clouds streaking soft sky. January thaw after freeze, twenties, cold feeling so harsh coming through coat with no breeze, dullness of movement of marsh. Only V lines of ducks trail disappearing with no wake. Slowly swimming as a snail, creating interest for my sake. Orange yellow sunspot up high and appears in water. Sigh. Winter North Wildwood, I cry for peace and color belie. That's wonderful. I just took a walk this morning by the bay and I saw some gulls sitting in the water and I was wondering if it was warmer in the water than it is in the air. Well, but, they have their protection. They have their oils and, yeah. and feathers. So, so yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, and you wanted to walk outside? I can show you a little bit of our house. Sure. Did you, do you have time for that? Yeah, oh yeah, we got time. Well, this, this house is called Five Chimneys. This is the fireplace we live by. Um, the only bake oven in Cape May County. And wow. it, the, the house is known as Five Chimneys. So we have- And that's one of them? That, that's one of the fireplaces, yes. And uh, my husband's trying to sneak by here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have this wonderful porch. Yeah. We have, we have, um, it's, 
it's a, th a two and a half story building built in the four centuries. We think the first part of it was um, where Joseph Ludlam came in 1690. So it has um, five chimneys. One is in the little the little house that's back that I'm using as a studio. I can sort of turn around so that I, it's in the background, I guess. Uh -huh. And the then studio. we have, yeah. And then we have another part of it that has a lean to and where I, um, where the bake oven is. And that's, um, I think first built probably around 1700. And then we have another part that's in our dining room that where I was sitting. And that I believe was a tavern owned by uh, one of the Joseph Ludlums in the 1740s. So that this would have been the tavern. Okay. And then the front, the front of the house was built in 1833. And oops, it's freezing up a little. We're having technical difficulties. I, I'm back. I walked too far, I think. Oh, okay. Too far out front. Oh, by the way, I hope you have um, modern plumbing and heating by now. Oh, yes. They put in um, a kitchen on one of the porches in the 1980s. And before that, they, they might have used the the uh, studio where I, this very tiny house, it's 11 by 11 feet. And I think that's what they used for the kitchen before that. But they, they, had, they lived here, the Townsends lived here until the 1930s. And then it was used as a summer home, but it does have electric. And we even have a five seat outhouse in case we <laughs> uh, have problems. <laughs> and we have a barn that's supposed to be, uh, um, it's been estimated that's been, was built in 1700 to 1725. So it is, uh, we are, we have a, a, a rubber roof on it at the moment just to keep the, the wet out, but right. we hope to, to renovate that and, and, uh, and uh, be able to use that as a studio as well. Wow. Okay, so, so this is like a whole project anyhow, living in a house like that. Oh, yes. We have quite a few buildings. We have an ice house. Um, we have a garage that I can use as a studio in the summertime. Right. And uh, we have a root cellar, a couple of root cellars, and a smokehouse. The smokehouse has a little tiny three-inch window, and it's all brick. So I'm sure that they they uh, smoked many a fish and many a um, many a ham. So, okay, in there. Right, yes, yes. And that's so that's, my, it's definitely old school, right? You it's your... definitely old school. As a matter of <laughs> fact, the barn, the barn was uh, uh, said to be used as a really uh, we think was used as the school because Henry Ludlam donated a an acre land about a block and a half um, from here where it was the first school in Cape May County. And before that, he raised his family. So we think that the five seed outhouse was specifically used for the old school in the barn. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> old school plumbing, right? That's, that's right, old school plumbing. <laughs> So we, we do still have a couple of bathrooms. So I'm going back inside where it's not quite so plenty or cold. Yeah. Well, yeah. Janet, I want to thank you today. Thanks for spending oh, time with welcome. us. And uh, quite well. where, where um, can people, uh, you know, a website or Facebook page or something? Yeah, so I have a Facebook page and uh, I have, uh, you just look up Janet McShane, you can see 
paintings. I have a space up at, um, uh, at Art on Asbury up in Ocean City. I'll be teaching um, teaching for the library or the um, the art center up there in the library in Ocean City. And I also do private lessons here at the house. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, when things open up, I have taught many different places, Community Center for the Arts and then the uh, National Wildlife Refuge and that's different awesome. places around Cape May, yes. Um, and they so that's McShane. And I just wanna make sure the spelling of McShane, M-C-S-H-A-I-N. That's right. Yes, Janet yeah. McShane. Janet mm -hmm. McShane. You can Google. Yes, and when I write, yes, when I write the poetry, I add the, my maiden name, Clark, in there too. So the poetry. I saw that. Yeah, Janet Clark makes.